Amendment number 204, printed in the Congressional Record, offered by Mr. Scalise of Louisiana. The gentleman is recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We've seen over the last two years under President Obama a very disturbing proliferation of czars, these unappointed, unaccountable people who are literally running a shadow government, heading up these little fiefdoms that nobody can really seem to identify where they are, what they're doing, but we do know that they're wielding vast amounts of power. Many of them are making six-figure salaries, and yet you can't find out exactly what they're doing, yet you've got the separate cabinet that's actually appointed, goes through the scrutiny of Senate confirmation, which is the process that is supposed to be followed for people that make these kind of high-level decisions. In fact, I support the ability of the President to organize his administration, and of course, if you look at Article 2, Section 2 of the Constitution, it lays out the process for having these types of appointments, and it requires Senate confirmation. Yet you've got this shadow government that literally completely avoided the transparency and the accountability of that Senate scrutiny. What we do in this amendment, which actually sacks these czars, we actually go through, and I'll start with the Obamacare czar. Of course, we had a vote here on the House floor to repeal Obamacare, which I'm proud to have supported, hope we continue to see move through the Senate. But in the meantime, we just had a hearing the other day, over 900 companies have already gotten exemptions. Went and, I guess, lined up at the White House and must have known somebody right over there and were able to get exempted from this law that the President says is so important, so great, going to solve all these problems, and yet 900 companies have already been able to get secret exemptions. How have they done this? Who didn't get an exemption? Of course, our local businesses on Main Street would love to get that exemption. They didn't get that opportunity. We can't even find out who got these exemptions. So we're getting rid of the Obamacare czar. Let's go to the climate czar. Of course, you've got a person in there right now that, that supposedly is going to be leaving. Uh, this is a person who's continued to do things behind closed doors. In fact, when the moratorium on drilling came out, it was found out that it was the climate czar that actually doctored the president's own scientific study to try to say that scientists that the president appointed recommended a moratorium on drilling. Turned out the scientists didn't say that at all. The White House actually had to apologize for the actions of the climate czar for what they did. Again, behind closed doors, nobody can find out exactly what they're doing. So if she's leaving, let her leave and take the funding too. The global warming czar, there's actually a czar out there trying to still impose a cap and trade regime. Of course, Congress has rejected cap and trade. Uh, we've seen study after study. In fact, Spain came up with a study that, that showed what happened when they tried to implement a cap and trade regime. And what they found out was for every green job that they created, they lost over 20 full time jobs in the private sector. And they, laid, they detail that out very well in their study about what that policy does. National Association of Manufacturing said cap and trade would run over three million jobs out of this country. Yet we've got a global warming uh, czar that's running around out there with taxpayer money promoting a policy that would destroy jobs that this Congress doesn't even support. Again, you've got the green jobs are. The green jobs are, they haven't even filled the job of the green jobs are since the last one resigned in disgrace. The last green jobs are we had left in disgrace because he expressed comments embracing communism and actually tried to blame the government, the American government, for September 11th uh, attacks. And so, of course, that person left in disgrace. The job's still not even vacant. Let's get rid of it. The Guantanamo Bay closures are. We get rid of in this, in this amendment. Guantanamo Bay, in fact, if you look at it, it's estimated that we'd have, have to spend over $200 million to build another facility to hold them. Nobody wants them. New York said we surely don't want to try these terrorists on American soil right down the street from uh, where the World Trade Centers were attacked. And yet you've got a Guantanamo Bay closure czar when the president himself now has even backed off of closing Guantanamo Bay. And I support him in that. We shouldn't be closing Guantanamo Bay. But we surely shouldn't have a czar that's, in, that's running around out there doing who knows what for closing down Guantanamo Bay. There's a fairness doctrine czar that we get rid of. A fairness doctrine czar that's trying to undermine the First Amendment rights of talk radio hosts. You know, there may be some people on the other side that don't like some things said on talk radio. That's their prerogative. The beauty is you've got a First Amendment that dictates that, and you've got a marketplace. So the bottom line is it's time that we reestablish our responsibility as a legislative branch. Let's get back to those constitutional principles. 
And let's get rid of these czars. We shouldn't have uh, the government running car companies. We shouldn't have the government running the shadow government. And we shouldn't have all these czars. I urge my colleagues to support this amendment, and I yield back the balance of my time. Gentlemen.